Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badgerworks. Today, this. <laughs> this is a piece of wood, as you can see, uh, and this is going to form uh, the base for our diorama for our panther build. So, let's get on with it. Yes, so we're going to use this piece of wood. Um, as with everything I do, there is a bit of a backstory to this piece of wood. Uh, this is an offcut uh, from a, a piece of furniture board. And a long time ago, I mean, it must be 25 years ago, something like that. Uh, I was working um, in, a, in a yard that had lots of different companies in it. And one of the companies that was there was a, a company that specialised in uh, trailers, trailer renovations, stuff like that. And they had a trailer in, a uh, 40-foot curtain side trailer, that had um, the, basically the brakes had seized on it uh, and it had broken down. And they had recovered it and repaired it. And then the company who owned the trailer, I don't know all the details, but they either couldn't or wouldn't pay the bill. So the company had taken the trailer and the load as payment. Um, and what it was loaded with was this. Um, like pallets and pallets and pallets of, of furniture boards. And you've probably seen like these pine, you know, like dressers and side tables and that kind of stuff. Well, it was all the tops for those, um, hence this d detail on the front, uh, in all different shapes and sizes. And uh, I said to the guy, um, I said, I wouldn't mind some of that. And he said, help yourself, take as much as you want. He said, because we're just going to unload it. He said, we don't want the load, we only want the trailer. He said, we're going to take all this wood off and, um, and burn it. So anyway, unfortunately, I couldn't. I would have had all of it if I could, but I had. I think I took like three pallets of it, uh, and they unloaded it with a fork truck for me. And I, I put it in my dad's yard that was on the same site. And like every time I went down there, I would just like fill the car up with boards and take them home. Um, and so that was about twenty-five years ago, and I'm still using it. <laughs> so yeah, very handy. Um, so yes, this is pine. It's uh, it's eighteen mil, three quarter um, nominal pine. Um, and I don't know if you can see, you probably can, but you can see that it's actually laminated. Uh, and the reason that you do that is because, firstly, you can make a wide board out of lots of smaller boards. And also, by doing it this way, it makes it less uh, or more resistant to cupping or curling. Uh, if you just have a single wide board, as it dries, it will actually curl if you're not careful. Whereas when you do it like this, with lots of narrow boards glued together, it tends to be more stable and lay flat. So, but anyway, that's all beside the point. I'm just waffling now. Uh, so, yes, this is going to be the base of our diorama. So, let me get the tank and show you. It's going to be difficult to film this because of the size of the thing, but there you go. So, I'm going to have the tank kind of like that-ish. Um, somewhere around there. And then, obviously, there'll be some details and things around it. But this is just to give you an idea of the scale of the thing. Um, so what I'm going to do first is cut it to size. Now I want to keep it roughly the size it is now, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip this, this detail off the front and then I'm just going to put a little bevel around all four corners, four sides rather, um, just to give it a little bit of decoration. So let's head over to the table saw and cut some wood. Right, so this is my little table saw. It's a, a very old Ryobi model. Um, but it's stood me in good stead. I've just put a new blade on it, uh, a nice uh, Freud blade. I don't have any affiliation with Freud, but I do like their blades. Hashtag sponsor me. Um, so what I've done is I've tilted the blade to a 15 degree angle, and I'm just going to nip off this edge here, and then, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to put a 15 degree bevel on all four sides, and then we can give it a little bit of a sand just to tidy it up a bit. And then put some uh, put some finish on it, put some stain and whatnot on it. So uh, this is going to get noisy. So I'll um, put something else over the top so you can. And just remember, whenever you're operating any kind of power tools, um, make sure you have all the guards in place. Yes, I know I don't have the guard on mine. That's my decision. Make sure you have the guards in place. Uh, safety equipment. Make sure you've got safety glasses, hearing protection, and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, just be safe when you're operating power tools. Right, so there's our first uh, 15 degree bevel. Uh, I don't know where you can see that, there you go. Um, so I'll do the same on the other three sides and then we'll uh, 
give it a bit of a sand. Right, there we go. That's all four sides done. I like so I'll give it a quick sand and uh, then we'll put some uh, finish on it. Right, so I've just given this a quick sand, uh, as I mentioned. Now I'm going to put some of this Colron wood dye on it. This is uh, Indian rosewood. And uh, my daughter's just turned up. Say hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. The missus was here as well, but she scarped when I turned the camera on. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I've put some in this cup. I've got a little foam brush, and basically, what we're going to do is just apply it liberally, like so. And you can see the way that's wicking into the grain, so because obviously we're going over the end grain, um, but. Uh, We'll just put plenty of this on. It's a bit dark. Well, I know it's dark. That's what I want. I want dark. Like that. And what we'll do is we just put it on, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and let it soak in, and then uh, give it another coat, then wipe off any excess, and uh, leave it to dry, and then we can put some varnish on it. I mean, technically we didn't need to cover all of this because the middle of it will obviously have other things on it, but... To be honest, it's as easy to do it like this than it is to try and muck about masking it and everything. It's just not worth it. Right, so as I say, we'll let that dry and then um, give it some varnish. Right, now that's set up for a bit, what I'm going to do is just give it a little wipe with a tissue just to get the excess off. Because as you can see, there's quite a lot, and what I don't, because what I don't want is is like drips and dark spots. So I'm not actually really wiping this. I'm just like just gently going over it, just to pick up any any big drips and blobs that are sitting on the surface, just like that. And so now we'll leave this to dry, and then we'll put some uh, put some varnish on it. So the next step is uh, I've got a piece of red felt here um, and I'm going to use that to line the bottom of the board. I've just gone around the edges with some masking tape and that's to prevent any overspray and also it gives me a nice little border around the top here so when I put stuff on the top I don't have to worry about getting too close to the edges. So I've got some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. Uh, I'm not affiliated with 3M in any way but basically when it comes to glue these are the people you want to be talking to uh, this is really good stuff so what I'll do is I'll just give both pieces a spray of this just make sure I get right to the edges Right, and now the fun bit is putting this together. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Okay. Now. There, uh, lift it 
up and press it down. to the edges. Like that. Now there's a little bit of overhang on the edges you can see, which was done deliberately so that I would make sure it fit properly. So what I'll do now is I'll let this dry and then uh, afterwards I'll come back with a scalpel and just trim off the edges. So what I don't want to do is put this back down on this paper because it's now covered in spray glue. So let's move that out of the way. And we'll just leave that. And what I'll do is I'll put something on it just to weight it down uh, to hold it so that it's nice and secure and then once it's dry, we'll um, trim the edges off. Uh, so I have showed you this before. I did a video uh, on this before on how to make these walls. Uh, I just wanna make a couple of dry stone walls to go on it. Uh, I'll put a link up in the, wherever it is. Um, but I, it never hurts to go over it again. So what I've got is, uh, is this is just a piece of old scrap MDF that I've just put some uh, cling film on. And I've got a, a big tub here of, this is like off brand, it's not, you know, Lego. It's an off-brand thing. Um, I think this came from Wilkinson's, actually. They had, like, a, a pick-and-mix kind of thing where you could just choose what blocks you wanted. So I just picked all these six spots and four spots. Um, so I've just made a form, or a couple of forms, like that. And uh, what I'm going to do now is this is uh, Vaseline. Stop laughing at the back. And what we want to do is just put a nice layer of this down and this is basically just to stop the adhesive from sticking to the cling film uh, I mean it shouldn't stick anyway but just to be on the safe side I'm sure you're all giggling at the thought of lubing up a mold but there you go um, but this is a great way of making forms for molds if you're doing any kind of casting you can uh, you can make a mold or a form for your mold uh, out of Lego or you know other brands are available hashtag sponsor me um, and uh, you can make them whatever size and shape you want and in this case I'm going to use the, the Lego itself as the form so next step I've got some these are granite uh, road scalpings they're what they use for surfacing roads sometimes and whenever they, they they did all the roads around here a couple of years ago and when they're finished there's just piles of this stuff laying everywhere um, so I just went down there with a carrier bag and just scooped up a few handfuls and uh, and I keep it uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of it in here probably going to need quite a lot of this actually I've got more um, and then I've got this is uh, Mod Podge mat, uh, and I've also got some scenery glue here, which again I made in a previous video. But uh, what I'm going to do is just oh, if I can get into it, oh, I should do this with a knife really, but there you go. A nice, nice skin on the top of it. Look, that was the missus ringing me a cup of tea. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I'll just get this lid off like that. Oh, this is the trouble. Is that? Where it's, there's a skin on the top of it and it's just sitting on the top. <laughs> oh, that looks disgusting. Um, 
oh, I'll deal with that in a minute, never mind. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is just mix this up so that all the all the stones have got a good coating of the uh, of the Mod Podge. Basically, put this in our forms and just fill up the forms. And what I'm going to try and do, if I can, is I'm going to do one just continuous wall, and then I'm going to do one with a break in the middle. So, but we'll see how it goes. Like I say at the moment, it's just a case of filling them up. Just kind of tamp it down a bit to try and get rid of the the gaps and get the stones settled together. that one and this one I'll fill up both ends and leave a gap in the middle and just kind of make two broken walls also going to do, I'll just turn this around so I've got a bit more space, just put some more Vaseline down here, like that, and I'm just going to make a few little piles just like that, so that you can have stones that have fallen off the wall and stuff like that. So just, you know, any, any size you want really, from little clumps up to big lumps and, you know, whole like crumbled sections, just whatever you want. Right. We'll leave those to dry and uh, then take them out of the moulds. Uh, so this has had sufficient time to uh, to dry now. So the nice thing is, like with these these like pieces here, you can just peel them off the cling film, and uh, you've got a nice little bit of like scatter. Um, same with these ones and these smaller ones. You can just I say, just peel them off. And uh, you can put them wherever you want on your on your terrain to give you a little bit of like just like fallen stone. Of course, what I didn't realise when I was doing it is that these ones are actually uh, cat litter, not granite. <laughs> but it doesn't matter; they'll still work. Um, now, the next thing we need to do, and this is going to be tricky, is getting these out of here because the problem is. Uh, and I'll show you, this is the pot I was mixing it in. You can see here, this is still wet. If I, you see like here it's dry and hard. And here, you can see it's still wet inside. So that's what's going to be happening inside here. So you have to be careful when you take them out of the forms that they're actually cured sufficiently that they're not just going to fall apart. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just move these pieces to one side for a minute. Yeah, see that's still wet on the bottom. I think I'll just leave that for a while longer. I think what I might do, and I've done this before with these, is actually tip it up upside down. Because the top's dry, the top's nice and dry, but the bottom is still wet. 
So what I'll do is, this is where the fun starts, is just make sure that they're both loose on the cling film, which they are, and then turn it over, try not to drop them, like that, you see, and you can see how wet that still is on the bottom. So what I'll do now is I'll just put those back on there upside down, like that, and we'll leave them to dry on the bottom as well, and then uh, hopefully we can unmould them. Okay, let's see if we can get these out of here. We might actually have to dismantle the uh, the mould to get it out. I'm just hoping that it will... The trouble is what happens sometimes is the glue seeps between the bricks and sticks them together. <laughs> It's entirely possible that these may still be wet in the middle, but if they are, then once they're out of the moulds, we'll just leave them and they'll dry. Again, it's just there, you see, like it's still damp there. It's just, you, you just got to let the air get to it. So. And to be honest, if these walls like break up, it doesn't really matter because we can still use them. But there you see, that's still wet, so we'll leave that to dry. Build a diorama, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Ugh. But like I say, what tends to happen is the glue even with the Vaseline, the glue can sort of seep in between the blocks and stick them together. But, as you can see, it's coming apart. There we go. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? I like that. There we go. That looks like a wall, doesn't it? And it's uh, good and solid. Wonderful stuff. Right, I think we're getting close to being able to start putting this thing together. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick bit of laying out just to see what this looks like. So I'll put that there. And I'll put the tank about there. And then we've got another bit of wall that goes here. Because basically what I want to do is give the impression that this tank is like driving down a very narrow like country lane. Uh, and I've got a few bits here. I actually remade this wall. I wasn't happy with the other ones, the way they came out. So I just quickly made another one. Uh, and then some of these broken pieces can go on just wherever, just because what I want to do is kind of make it look as if the wall, you know, because dry stone walls do fall down. They actually, it's, it's funny actually with dry stone walls, you wouldn't think it, but they actually do need quite a lot of maintenance. Um, so. Just trying to find the right pieces to use. So something like that. Right. I think something like that will do us as a basic layout. Because, um, yeah, I wanted to sort of, as I simulate a, a, a narrow lane, but I didn't want to do a full wall on this side because it would. I didn't want to hide too much of the uh, of the tank. So. But I think that doesn't look too bad. So what I need to do next is put 
some sort of covering on this as a base and what I've got to do that is this uh, this is um, Mangers ready mix filler this actually came from the range it's very cheap stuff so <laughs> I've used it before and it actually works quite well so let's take these pieces off for a minute and put them to one side I want to keep these in the right order so I know where they're going back on All right, let's get rid of that, get rid of that, let's take the tank off. Take that wall off. Now, what I'm gonna do, oh, if I can get the lid off, is put some of this filler on. Oh. So yeah, it just comes like that. I mean, obviously we don't need the spreader, um, but it has like a plastic piece of plastic over it just to keep it wet in the tub. So, uh, oh, I need a wheel. That's what I need is a wheel. Let me find a wheel quickly back in a sec. Yeah, I've just got myself some wheels. These are aftermarket wheels that I bought a long time ago and I haven't actually used them yet, but they're for a, a, a Schwimmwagen, you know, uh, the, um, uh, amphibious Volkswagen basically um, so these are resin wheels but they have really nice detail on the tire treads so I'll show you what I'm going to use those for in a minute but first let's get some of this on the base yeah let's get rid of that and I've got a, a spoon here just to get some out and onto the the base I'll just put a couple of dobs of that down to start with and I've got a palette knife but I mean you can use anything to spread this out use your fingers if you want and what I want to do is just put a layer on to start with just to give us a nice bit of coverage I don't want it too thick, but I want it, you know, like a, a few millimetres thick. It doesn't have to be exact, obviously, but and the trick is I want to get it up to the edge without going over the edge if I can avoid it. But I do want to get quite close to the edge because obviously the walls will need to be quite near the edge. But you can see what the basic process is, is just to spread it out and um, try and work it close to the edges. Let me get the rest of this on and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. So that's our layer of um, filler on and what I've just done is just gone around the edges with a wet cotton bud and just sort of cleaned up any errant bits of, uh, of filler like that. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. I don't want it to dry completely, but I want it to kind of start to set up. Because what I want to do is smooth the surface and shape it a little bit. And it's easier to do that once it's started to go off. And basically what you do, I mean, I'll show you in a minute, obviously. But um, what you do is once it's started to set up, you can just basically wet your finger and run it over it. And it will smooth it out and you can almost shape it like clay. Um, but if you do it now while it's too wet, it just basically it's like well it's like wet putty it just doesn't work um, so we'll just leave this set up for a few minutes and then we'll start shaping it right so this has had a chance to set up a little bit it's still damp but it's not completely dry so what I'm going to do is just take some water and just wet my finger and you want it sort of reasonably wet not soaking wet but reasonably wet and just go over it very lightly with your finger I mean I'm very barely putting any pressure on this at all and just going over it and just smoothing out any sort of obvious you know marks from the tools and things like that and just uh, just kind of helping to shape it a little bit this ha this has actually it's interesting it's actually cracked a little bit but that's all right 
but hopefully you can see, I mean obviously it's white so it's difficult to see it, but hopefully you can see that where there are tool marks and things in the in the uh, filler, it's actually smoothing them out. So I'll just go over this quickly and we do want it slight, the surface slightly damp for the next step which is all kind of linked together. This is the thing with this, is you have to be sort of fairly swift with it because you don't want it to dry out, but at the same time you need it to be not too wet. It's, it's quite a, a thing to judge it. But we're getting there. Okay, so that's that. Now, what I want to do is take the wall and put it roughly where it needs to be. And what I want to do is kind of just press it into the plaster slightly. Or filler, I should say. I keep calling it plaster and it's not. Just so that it leaves a mark so I know where it's going back. Like that. It's left a little bit of stuff in it, but that's all right. Don't worry about that. And then we'll do the same over this side. So this is why you want the surface sort of damp, so that it uh, will take the imprint. Oh, let's make sure my fingers are clean. Because what I also want to do is take the. Actually, let's put that wall back for a second. And put the tank on where it needs to go and I just want to gently push that down to create a bit of a, a track mark because although I want the ground on this to appear dry I don't want it too wet I'm not doing like a muddy road it's going to be more like a like a dusty road than a muddy road and then we'll do these pieces as well. We might not need all of these actually. Might just need one or two of them. I think maybe just this one. We'll put that one there like that. And just push it in a bit. And this one. Pop that there like that and push it in a bit. And now what I want to do is take the tank off. You see that's left some nice tread marks. I'll do a few more behind it as well. Because I don't, again, I don't need it to be absolutely bogging, but see the tank is heavy and even on a dry road it will leave marks. There we go. And now we go back to the wheels that we had earlier. And I'll take one of these out. I'll use this spare actually. And what I want to do is just create some indents of sort of tire marks and things just to make it look like something else has driven down the road while it's been wet and then as it's dried out it's um just left tire marks behind so we'll do some deep ones and some you know not so deep ones as it were what you can do as well if I can find something that will fit all right I've just got a paintbrush here and you can also do this and just run it down like that and do is get it back so that they go underneath the tank. I don't need to do the whole road but just enough to kind of sell the the illusion as it were. I'll just cross them over as well. 
and we'll do some at the back here as well which is going to be a bit trickier because let's just take those walls off now ah, that's one and that's two See? And it just makes the road look a bit more used rather than it just being, you know. Just makes it look like it's had a bit more traffic down it. And I'll wash that wheel out as well to get all the stuff out of it. But now, I can take these off as well. Carefully. We can um, leave that to dry and then we can start thinking about putting some finishes and things on it. Uh, so this has had a chance to dry now, I left it overnight. Um, and what I've got now is a selection of uh, acrylic paints. These are just like normal artist paints and I'm going to use these to start building up some base colours on our diorama. So this is um, yellow ochre and this is kind of the, the, the main colour that I want. So I'll start with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to paint it on, I'm actually going to make a, like a, a wash to put over it just because it's easier to cover things like this. Um, so I've just got a little plastic cup here and I'll just put some in here, mix it with a little bit of water and then we'll put it on. Right, so I've got a fairly chunky brush here. Um, this is a three quarter inch flat brush. It's actually a, a washing brush, so there you go. And we'll just put a good coat of this on. The nice thing about doing this as a wash is the fact that if you, you don't have to be too precious around the edges. Um, if you go over the edge a bit, it doesn't matter. Because it's a, f a fairly um, translucent effect, it's, uh, it doesn't really hurt it too much if you go over the edge. So we'll just give this a good going over. And you, you can see how it's picking up all the details and making everything pop, which is what I want. So I'll cover this and, uh, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so that's uh, the first coat of the uh, yellow ochre on. What I've done now is I've just added a little bit of uh, raw sienna to the same wash. And uh, what I'm going to do is go around the areas where the walls and that are going to be, just to darken them a bit. Because I want this to look a bit more like soil. So I'll just put it on and then kind of blend it together. So this is another reason for making the marks where the uh, the various bits of terrain go because you can see where you need to um, where you need to put stuff. So all I want to do is just darken it a little bit. And what I'm doing as well is um, around the edges here, if I get any any paint on the wood, because it has the varnish on it, 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 won't, um, it won't sink in, it just sits on the surface. And so you can just come in with a, a cotton bud like this and just wipe it off. And if it gets a bit too dry, you can just wet the cotton bud and get it off that way. So... I think what I'm going to do is get another brush just with some water 
to help blend these um, pigments together. Don't go too mad with it because otherwise you'll uh, wipe all the paint off. <laughs> but it's just to blend the edges together. Basically just what I want to do is just darken the area behind and around the walls. But again, I don't want any brush marks and things in it. That'll do. Right, and now I'm going to add some uh, burnt umber to the same wash and darken it more. And then I'll just go in, in a bit more controlled fashion just around where the actual wall is. What you have to remember when you're doing this is that every time you add pigment to the wall to the mix you need to add more water to counteract it because you can see now that's actually got quite thick so I'll just add a little bit more water. Alright and then we'll do the same again. You can see how much darker this is so we don't need a lot of it. Again, this is mainly just going where the walls will be, just to darken the, the sort of base of the walls. Right, and now I'll do the same thing again. And just switch to our other brush with some water and just let it blend a bit. Just to get rid of brush marks and whatnot. slightly more tricky with this because obviously they're very different shades but it's uh, just work at it basically all you want to do is make sure there are no um, like brush marks or uh, like obvious straight lines I mean, we're going to put more more finishes on top of it anyway, but just to uh, give you a fighting chance, as it were. Right, and what I want to do now is stick the walls back on. So I've got some Mod Podge again. And what I'm going to do is just put a bead of this along the bottom of the wall. Like that. And pop it in place. Like that. to set up for a while and then we'll come back and put some more stuff on it so while that's drying I'm gonna make um, a bit of a gate to go uh, on the uh, end of the wall uh, so what I want to do is make like a, a three or a five bar gate so I reckon it needs to be about an inch and a half tall to be somewhere near scale so I'll cut one just to give me a starting point. And what I want to do is mark a couple of cross rails on it. So like a, I'll just do, I mean, ideally it'd be a five bar gate, but um, I'm going to do a, a three bar gate. <laughs> so... 
we'll put one there and then one at the bottom like that and then we'll do one in the middle like that and now what I need to do is cut some pieces uh, to go to fill those gaps so we'll cut across here I've got to be careful not to lose any of these bits because I need them. <laughs> right so that's the top bit and then we'll get rid of this bit and we want this bit there and then we want to get rid of this bit and then we want this bit like that so what I'm going to do now is I'll cut another couple of these off at an inch and a half. Right, so now what we'll do is stick these bits on here. With a bit of Mod Podge. bit to go here like that I'll just cut this off at an angle and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the I just want to like chew the end up of it and make it look a bit like it's snapped off. Like that. And we'll glue that on the bottom. Down here. to go on the bottom here so I'll just stick that on there and I'll cut it flush in a minute for now. So now, I'll get this 
this a good double glue. This one over the top, like that. And then we'll put a couple of clamps on that and let it dry. Right, and while that's drying, I've just got some, uh, some dirt from the garden and I'm just grinding it up in the mortar and pestle here. And just I'm just picking out the bigger stones as I go along but basically what I'm going to do is just give it a good pound up and then I'll put it through a sieve to get rid of the, the big bits so I'm literally just left with dirt this is actually very like thick clay but it's dried out and uh, and then I'm going to put it through uh, put it through a blender I've got a, a blender that I use for precisely this kind of thing don't use your kitchen blender because you'll ruin the blades um, and basically really powder it fine so again it's just take little pieces like this just get them in there and just give them a good bashing just to basically break them up and if there's any like lumps of stone and that in there just uh, just fish it out but I'll do a load more of this and then we'll stick it in the blender and see what we end up with Right, so that's uh, suitably blended and sifted. So what I did was I um, I just pounded it up in the in the more in the pestle and mortar as you saw, and then I put it through uh, uh, a cheap food processor that I have. It's just a blender. Um, don't use a good one because it just the blades are absolutely wrecked in seconds because it just chips. Then you know they're not meant to do this kind of thing. So just use a cheap one. Um, and then I put it through a sieve and I've ended up with this. So we'll use that in a minute, but we're gonna put that to one side for now and turn our attention back to our gate. And uh, there's another piece here that I've been working on. And I don't know whether you can see that, but uh, I've just been making it, just distressing it a bit. And what you can do, if you're using something like balsa wood, uh, you can just use a wire brush, just rub a wire brush over it. Uh, if you just get, you can get little ones like this. Um, and you just basically just go like that over it and it will put that kind of effect on it. The trouble is with this, being a coffee stirrer, these are, I believe they're actually made of hardwood, which is quite surprising. So the wire brush has no effect on it. But what you do in that case is just take a knife like this and just And what will happen is as you scrape it along, it will basically naturally follow the, the grain of the wood. And um, you can just like, just like accent it, extenuate it, make it look more obvious like that. You see? So I'll do the rest of that bit in a minute. But what we need to do with this bit now is just give it a bit of a sand just to... Uh, get everything kind of even especially it's more the top I'm worried about because I kind of I want this to look like a post instead of three separate pieces which is going to be tricky but it's uh, it doesn't really matter that much it's basically like that and then again come back in with a knife and just uh, just distress it like that. So I'll get on and do the rest of this and then uh, once I'm done I'll show you what we're going to do next. So these have been distressed now uh, and what I'm going to do is these are the washes that I made before. There's a grey one and a brown one and I'm going to use a combination of the two to kind of uh, weather this because if you actually look at old wood it's not brown, it's grey. Um, so, uh, I had a brush a minute ago, there it is. And I've just got this uh, 
this is basically just to catch any drips and also to for me to put it in when I'm done so I'm just gonna put these washes on you see the way that's picked out the grain straight away that we added So I'll just give this a, a liberal coating of this like that and then go back over it with the uh, the grey just to kind of tone it down a bit like that and we'll let that dry I'll do the other bit as well and just while I'm doing this I would like to uh, say a thank you to my top tier patrons uh, Amy, Neil Edwin and uh, Howard thank you for your support guys it's much appreciated as ever right, and I'll just pop that in there and let that dry in there like that and uh, we'll let those dry and then I'll give them a little dry brush with some grey and that'll uh, hopefully get them where we want them okay so I'm just going to fit the fence post now I've just made a little mark where it needs to go and I'm going to drill a hole like that it in like that and then the other bit I'll just put some double glue on the bottom of there like that right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dirt from earlier and I'm basically going to put it along the bottom of the wall here like this It looks like I'm putting quite a lot down and there is a fair amount but the thing is once I put the uh, the glue on it it will actually disappear quite significantly it's one of these things I've found you always end up needing more than you think push it in like that Then, we take some scenery glue and I'll put a link up to the video where I made this up here somewhere. See, there's quite a lot of this glue going everywhere, but that's okay. We can get rid of that afterwards. Now, just get a bit of uh, kitchen paper and just dab off the excess like that. There you go. And then we'll let that dry. Alright, now I've got
got some woodland scenics blended turf here and I'm just putting a little bit on top of the dirt just to simulate some grass just give it a little splash of colour and I'll do the same thing here as I did before I'll just go around all the walls the bases of all the walls and uh, just give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of colour and then on top of that this is again woodland scenics but this is um, burnt grass and this stuff's really amazing because it just does such a good job of just tying everything together you just need a little tiny bit of it like literally that's that's enough but it just ties everything together so I'll do the same again I'll go around all the walls and everything else and just uh, make it look a bit more planty Right, and what I'm doing now is just going over it with the uh, the the same dust mixture I used before, and this is just to tone it down a little bit because this road is a little bit bright. Um, but I just want to get this in here, and it just basically just helps tie everything together. I'll just go over the whole thing with this, and then. Uh, fix it in place with some more scenery glue but I'll get on and do the rest of this and uh, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like right so we're getting down to the nitty gritty now so what I want to do now is put the tank and the figures on so I am going to stick the tank down and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a just a couple of blobs of glue on so worst case you can get it off again like that and then we'll put this in place like that Right, and now we need to put our crew on. I might just turn that around slightly. Like that, there we go. So this chap needs to go here. So he goes there like that. And now the other chap he goes over here and he's leaning against the front there so we need to make a little mark there to go in there like that right now I think we are very very close to being done here So, there's one more thing I want to do, but I'll show you that when we wrap this up. And here, after several videos and much wailing and gnashing of teeth, is our finally finished article. Uh, our panther with crew, and um, as you can see I've added <laughs> an extra little detail here, uh, which is why I am calling this diorama a brief respite. So uh, hopefully you guys have uh, enjoyed this little series and I will remind you that uh, this diorama 
that you see here is going to be auctioned. The auction is live now. There's a link in the description and uh, you can bid on it and uh, whoever wins and pays for it will uh, be making a nice donation to the Bobbington Tank Museum. So uh, if you happen to be anywhere near uh, Bobbington, of course, do feel free to pop in and, uh, and see them because they do have a, a rather nice uh, collection down there, very well worth going to have a look at. And uh, they do all sorts of live demonstrations and bits and pieces as well. So yes, a good day out for all the family. Um, and uh, for my own point, I would say, uh, please do, if you haven't already, feel free to uh, like, comment and subscribe, as they say. And uh, come and join us uh, on Facebook in the, uh, in the staff canteen. Again, link in the description. And uh, should you be feeling a little flush and want to help me out, then by all means, come and join us on, um, on Patreon as well. So, yeah, I've quite enjoyed doing this. It's, um, it's come out pretty well, I think. It's, it's uh, my first tank, my first tank diorama. My first, well, maybe not the first bird I've ever painted, but certainly the first one I've ever stuck on a barrel of a panther. So... <laughs> <laughs> a whole series of firsts in this video. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this little foray into armour. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more of it in, uh, in future videos. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.